Welcome to Horror Babble. Lost in the Wilds of Horror continues this week with story number four. The fourth of the seven tales, The Hunt, was written by our very own Jennifer Gill, and tells of a young lady's first hunt of the season across the sprawling Elderwood estate in North Yorkshire. We hope you enjoy this one. The Hunt by Jennifer Gill It was an unseasonably cold, crisp autumn morning. Mist was rising on the fields as she drove through the expansive North Yorkshire countryside. A multitude of emotions ran through the mind of Rebecca Coleman. Anticipation, exhilaration, confliction. Pulling up at the stables, she stepped out of her car. The sound of baying dogs reverberated throughout the large courtyard. The excitement in the air was electrifying. This was Rebecca's first hunt. At twenty-three, with ten years of experience, she was an accomplished rider, who had joined the club four months earlier, but hadn't yet been out in the field. Beechwood Stables was on the west side of the town of Garswold, a quaint Georgian market town steeped in history and charm. On the east side was the dense, fifty-thousand-acre Elderwood Forest, forming part of the centuries-old Elderwood Estate. The tradition of hunting was strong. Fox, deer, and game bird hunting had taken place annually on the Elderwood Estate for over five hundred years. These days, though, drag hunting was the principal sport, the act of following the trail of an artificial scent along predetermined routes. Despite the club no longer hunting live animals, the atmosphere was still adrenaline-charged. Men and women rushed around in traditional riding gear, preparing the horses and directing the dogs. Rebecca was eager, but nervous. Tucking her hair into a hairnet, she opened the stable gate, where Chester, her dappled grey Dutch warm-blood, was housed. He whinnied and brushed his handsome head against her. She could tell he was keen to get going. It was his first time, too. Taking a container of apple slices from her bag, Rebecca emptied them into the new bucket she had brought with her. She grabbed a grooming brush, and, while he was quiet, enjoying his treat, brushed and plaited his mane. Plaiting wasn't necessary during this season, but grooming helped calm the novice's nerves, and Chester loved the attention. Checking her watch, she saw that it was almost time to join the hunting party. She lifted on Chester's saddle, fastened the girth, and adjusted the flaps. Then it was her turn to get ready. Formal customs were still strong at the Elderwood Club. Traditional roles were filled. Master, junior master, secretary, treasurer, huntsman, and so on. But as the hunting of live animals had been outlawed, social rituals such as blooding had long since been abandoned. One tradition that had relaxed over the past half-century was the hunt attire, which had become more informal. Members now hunted in rat-catcher-style tweed jackets and tan jodhpurs, rather than full formal dress all with the exception of the higher-ranking members, who wore red coats. Exploiting this more informal style, Rebecca fixed her stock tie to her shirt, and secured it with the stunning gold stock pin her grandmother had given her for her eighteenth birthday, an item she hadn't had occasion to wear until now. Pulling on her tweed jacket, and grabbing the black suede helmet that had been hanging beside the stable door, she paused and took a deep breath. Chester neighed his approval. The hunting party was gathering, as the first timer led her strong stallion out into the courtyard of Beechwood Stables. His excitement and confidence reassured her, and the buzz of the riders gave her goosebumps. Joining the back of the group, Rebecca shared pleasantries with a handful of familiar faces, and exchanged formal greetings with new acquaintances. Then, putting her right foot in the stirrup, she stroked the soft coat on Chester's long neck, and pulled herself up onto him. At the front of the group, the twenty-strong pack of English pointers waited patiently, tails and tongues wagging, filled with excitement. The huntsman blew his horn, and the dogs became instantly still and silent. They were ready to begin. Starting the journey through the village, the huntsman took the lead, and the gun dogs obediently followed, with the remainder of the riders falling into line behind. Rebecca's heart was racing. Her thoughts were conflicted. 
She had never been sure, didn't know if she really wanted to participate in the hunt. But the adrenaline coursing through her veins told a different story. Passers-by stopped to watch and cheer on the hunters as they trotted through the village, celebrating this long-lasting tradition, the redcoats of the hunt staff and masters standing out against the bright blue Yorkshire sky. For the young rider, whose preceding nervousness had now been replaced entirely by exhilaration, the short journey from the west side of Garswold to the edge of the expansive estate felt like an eternity. As the hunting party made their way to the start of the pre-designated drag route, Rebecca took in the beauty of the acreage, the stunning manor house, the wild flower meadows, the forests, and the rolling hills of established farmland. Tensions rose as the group began to gather at the entrance to Elderwood Forest. The dogs had again begun to bay impatiently. Falling into line at the back of the hunting party, Rebecca turned Chester to allow the master to pass, and noticed the huntsman trotting towards her. It was tradition, he told her, for a newcomer to join the huntsman on the first trail of the season. Rebecca was confused. This was not what she had been told, and certainly not what she had expected. Her father had hunted, and his father before him, a family tradition she had been keen to follow. However, she had hoped she could hang back, get a feel for what was going on. But now, the huntsman was personally asking her to participate. Why? Time was running out. She couldn't refuse. Etiquette dictated politeness. His eyes burned into hers, awaiting her response. Yes, she said. She would love to. Now the adrenaline was really pumping. Perspiration was beginning to form on her forehead. Her hands were shaking. As the field master led the rest of the riders away, Rebecca sensed the dog's growing excitement, could feel Chester's anticipation beneath her. The huntsman blew the horn to calm the dogs, and told Rebecca they were about to begin. Pushing aside all the negative thoughts she'd had, she took a deep breath, and, as the sound of the horn filled the air, followed the huntsman into the fray. The sound of the well-trained pointers echoed around the estate. It was deafening and unsettling. The dogs picked up the scent. The two riders followed. Galloping through the forest, Rebecca consumed the environment, the smell of pine, the sun's rays streaming through the canopy, and the wind whirling past her face, gently stroking her cheeks. She was at one with the forest. Unexpectedly, something caught her eye ahead, and she pulled Chester's reins to slow him down. Squinting, she scanned for signs of movement, and looked over at the huntsman. He was focused, determined, and suddenly she realized they were hunting the live target. Thoughts flashed through her mind. This is wrong, cruel, inhumane, illegal. But her excitement was unprecedented. The huntsman glanced at her with an aberrant look in his eyes. Slowing down and trotting towards her, he reached down by the side of his thoroughbred saddle. All this time, Rebecca hadn't noticed the scabbard hanging by the huntsman's right leg. Slowly, never taking his eyes off her, he pulled out the rifle and handed it to her. She took it instantly. She didn't dare not to. The seasoned hunter then reached down his left side and pulled out another. Adrenaline surged through her. What the hell was he doing with two guns? let alone one. This was supposed to be a drag hunt, not a live hunt. Looking around, she realized they were deep within the heart of Elderwood Forest, the density of the trees darkening the bright autumn day. And, apart from the horses, three remaining dogs, and whatever it was they were now hunting, they were alone. Giving the huntsman a nod, indicating that she would continue, she slung the rifle over her shoulder and they slowly continued their journey through the woodland, the dogs pursuing the target. Without warning, one of the dogs broke away from the pack, and the huntsman instructed her to follow it. She obeyed. After several minutes, the dog stopped, having lost the scent of the quarry it had been chasing. Rebecca pulled Chester to a stop, as the pointer's head turned from side to side, its nose in the air, searching. The moment seemed to last for hours. Time slowed down as the three of them surveyed the area. A twig snapped behind them, and their heads turned as one. 
There was nothing there, no sign of the target. The young woman, who had believed she was joining the huntsman on the first trail hunt of the season, was now poised, senses awakened, checking for signs of movement. The dog howled. The scent was found. They were on the move again. As the dog pushed on ahead of them, Rebecca nudged Chester with her heel to coax him on, the gun swinging on her back as they galloped through the trees. The excitement built to a level she had never felt before. Leaping over a fallen limb, she momentarily lost sight of the dog. Panicking, she pulled Chester to a stop, and looked around. With no sign of the dog or the dog's target, aside from her loyal companion, she was alone. A deep silence had descended over Elderwood Forest. The gun dog's sudden barking startled both girl and stallion, and Rebecca could practically hear her pulse throbbing in her head. Slowly, the pair turned and approached the area where the barking had originated. Staying true to its breed, the dog was frozen, nose pointing towards a seemingly impenetrable patch of hawthorn, exposing its target. Stepping down from her horse, Rebecca was filled with apprehension. Pulling her newly acquired gun around, she slowly approached the bright red berry-laden bush. Then she saw it. Him. Crouched beneath a large woodland shrub, his ostensibly safe hiding place revealed by the gun dog, was a man, emaciated, disheveled, and not much older than herself. Oh, God, please no, he implored in a broken voice, as his terrified eyes looked up at her, then at the dog, and then quickly back to the ground. Mechanically, Rebecca lifted, aimed, and cocked her firearm. Please, he continued, don't do this. Tears streaked the man's dirt-covered face as he pleaded for his life, scuffling away from Rebecca's aim, only to be trapped by more hawthorn. Please, he beseeched again, I have a family, I have a child. Hesitating, doubts began to surface. She had only wanted to observe the first trail hunt of the season, but instead had been dragged right into the middle of a live hunt by the huntsman himself. The man was right. This was wrong. Holding her aim, she looked to the dog, who remained fastidiously pointed towards the man, then to Chester behind her who stood firm and proud, head held high. "'I didn't mean to. It was an accident,' the man whispered through sobs. Sighing, Rebecca relaxed her frame. She looked back to the man cowering in the bush. She was trembling. A bead of sweat trickled down the center of her neck. Her trigger finger was shaking. Her heart was racing. The dog was still, nose pointed at the target. She could hear the pack of gun dogs barking and howling in the distance. The huntsman must have caught up with them. The thunder of hooves came towards them. The rest of the hunt. It was now or never. She had a choice to make. To set this man free, or— A single shot rang out. 